So the first time I, I knew or I realized that healing needed to take place was um, I was 23 years old, um, 24 years old, and I had a nine month old baby and he probably was younger, maybe he was about six months old. And I was pregnant with my second child and I remember going, I was exhausted. Um, I was staying home. I was pregnant with the second one. And I remember going into the bathroom and looking into the mirror and I couldn't recognize myself. I looked into the mirror and I was wondering where did the girl go that was a dreamer that wanted to do something big in the world that knew she had purpose um, I couldn't see her anymore and I just thought to myself like there's got to be something more than this there's got to be a reason why I'm here um, and not that I didn't love my children or my husband or so forth but I just remember feeling that way and looking in the mirror and that was the day I was pregnant, but that was the day I decided I was gonna go back to college. And I knew healing needed to start happening and I needed to get a grip on my life and create the life that I wanted. Um, what was the first step that began your transformation change? Um, when I went back to school and I started to learn about psychology and human development and I started to learn how healthy um, what is healthy development, what is not healthy development. And I started to recognize that I had trauma, developmental trauma. And I also really strongly believed that trauma changed the brain. Now this was before all of the stuff that's out right now. This was in the um, 90s. And uh, I start, I'm like, I know my brain was different. I started to recognize why I had difficulty in elementary school. I was like reviewing my development as I was going to school. The other thing that really helped me was to have a woman's studies minor um, and started to question the beliefs of our culture, of our society, and looking inside myself and deciding, okay, what do I believe instead of all of this information that was downloaded into me from uh, being raised uh, in Illinois on the south side of um, Chicago, Tinley Park, you know. So I took a look at all of that and started to explore um, and examine my own belief system. So again, self-awareness going inside. Who has helped with this process? There's been many mentors. Uh, that have helped with this process along the way. Um, therapists, coaches, um, people that I've admired that I've reached out to and talked to. Um, anyone that I find on, the, on a similar path that's willing to be authentic and really open up and, and be self-aware, um, I've connected with. Um, what was the initial result of your choice and your behaviors? I think for a long time I didn't believe in myself and for a long time I did not feel I was living a life of purpose and it wasn't until I got trained um, first in EMDR which is eye movement desensitization reprocessing and then later brain spotting like EMDR helped me um, clear up some of my PTSD symptoms it helped me start to believe in myself again and then brain spotting helped me come alive and that's why I'm a trainer in brain spotting. Um, it really helped me connect with that little girl that I was um, that believed that she could do anything and that the, the world was filled with opportunity. I was able to see that and feel that the world looked wondrous to me. I was starting to begin to um, love the world again instead of being cynical and focusing on the, all the negatives that I saw. Um, I'm not sure about posit positive acknowledgement of your situation. Maybe that I would say that I'm 
even though it was a really tough journey, I'm glad it happened the way it did because it's shaped me into who I am now. And without that, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't be talking to you. Um, I wouldn't be serving my community. I always believe that um, serving and being a value is very, very important. Um, one of the things that I think I'm pretty good at is connecting with people, helping them feel heard, helping them feel validated, and um, recognizing where they're at and being supportive to where they would like to be able to go in their life. Um, a negative experience on how you conformed your new thought process with this acknowledgement. So, Prior to doing all this personal work, I was very much a people pleaser because that was the way that I um, got love in my in my family. If I would do what I was told, if I behaved well, then you got attention and care. And I don't think people in my family did that deliberately. I just think it was easier. You know, if I was an easy kid, it was easier um, to, you know, so I conformed to all that and I became a people pleaser. And that became very, very tough becoming a leader um, in my field because I would run around trying to please people, jump through hoops and so forth at the expense of myself. And what's happened over the last, I wanna say five years, is that more and more I'm setting boundaries, I'm acknowledging my own needs, I'm being authentic, even if people cannot hear me, I'm being authentic. There's been some sad experiences where people have left and have taken some of my boundaries personally, which has been very, very sad because I like connection. I like to connect with people. But in doing that, it's weeded out the people that drain my energy in my life and has made more room for people that are on a similar path. Um, and that gives me energy because I know I'm not alone. There's a lot of us that believe in making a difference in the world and will go above and beyond um, and do multiple things um, to serve our community and serve the world. And so I'm getting connected with more and more people like that. So it's, it's a very positive um, experience. So what has helped me move into a healthy direction is to really believe that the universe has my back and that I'm here for a reason and that um, my reason has a purpose. And um, I stay persistent um, in believing that. And when I stay persistent in, in believing that and uh, you know I get off course, um, I go back to my why. Why am, I, why am I doing this? This book right back here that you might be able to see is Dr. Seuss's book, Oh, The Places You Will Go. And it was a gift from a dear friend of mine. And when I'm confused and I, I'm not thinking that I'm on the right path, I remember that book. That's why it's sitting in my office. And I'm like, Cherie, go back to your why. Because there's lots of sparkly balls in life that are going to detract you from your path. And if I start to feel that, like I'm not engaged, I don't feel fully alive, I go back to, I've got all these things written down. I have a journal with the plan. Now the plan can evolve, but I still go back to my why, my purpose. And my purpose is to wake people up, to help this world become a more con conscious place where people can make conscious connections in their relationships, con uh, conscious choices in their life to where they can feel fully alive instead of deadened um, with cynicism and pe being pessimistic. Um, so how am I rewriting my story or words of wisdom? Well, my business is called Get Connected uh, for a reason. And um, I feel like I'm getting connected to myself. I will be married 32 years at, um, in October, so I feel like I'm making really um, more of a conscious connection with my husband, which you'll see his interview too. Um, conscious connection with my children, um, going back to what is um, truthful in my life, what really brings me value. I'm teaching therapists um, about brain spawning I'm coaching, I'm helping executives have conscious leadership, um, and I'm gonna be doing retreats, retreats for couples, 
because I see a lot of times we get married and it's kind of like, okay, go live happily ever after. And what people don't realize is that the skills that you have when you get married are usually the skills that you observed with your parents' marriage. And if your parents' marriage wasn't healthy, then you're now going to replicate those patterns and show up in your own personal uh, relationships. And, and so I, I help couples, I educate them and help build skills for conscious connection and relationships. Imago relationship therapy is something um, that I do as well. And so building some retreats um, out in nature, we, we just purchased a home and moved so we can bring people there, have them have a different experience than they've ever had before, help them feel cared for, help them be in nature and help them recognize how much that helps their central nervous system calm so that their higher self can be present and the higher self can start making the decisions. And that's the whole get connected and waking up. And that is the core of my belief of why I'm here on this earth and my purpose. And um, working with conscious content, I mean, I just love even the title, conscious content, because I'm wanting people to help them become conscious. And what better way to destigmatize uh, grief and trauma and um, be a voice for hope. Uh, I think people need hope. And um, if you're watching this video, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And it's so easy to get scared and let fear drive choices and behavior. And I've been studying about how to live with uncertainty and I'm, I'm not scared. I'm uncertain, but I'm not scared because I'm gonna love my way through this with my family, with my clients, and I believe um, as human beings we are very resilient. So thank you for listening um, to my vi uh, video and I hope all of you um, take time to reflect on your own story. When, you know, what was your path? What was your journey? Um, in the beginning of your healing. And I'm not done by any means. I am a lifelong learner and I believe I can grow until I am have my last days here on earth and that's my plan. What is yours? Again, my name is Cherie Lindbergh and I'm from Get Connected Counseling and Consulting and my website is www.getconnected.works.